those of you that saw the Bull Armory Axe C Tomahawk, a Glock inspired build, know that inside this rather plain looking box is a very exciting gun. <laughs> this time, however, it's something for the 1911 folk. This is the SAS 2 Ultralight 3 and a quarter inch 9 mil double stack 1911 by Bull Armory. Tabletop review and field strip coming up next on GB Go. So we open this less than exciting box and have a really nice case. The hundreds of handguns that we've reviewed here on GB Guns, we've seen a lot of different packaging come from a lot of manufacturers. And it seems like most manufacturers are torn between do we go cheap on the packaging because people are just gonna throw it away and not use it, or do we go fancy? And if we go fancy, is it worth it? Full Armory has this bag here, even has lockable eyelets on there that I think is quite worth using as a range bag. Opening it up, up top, we've got plenty of spots for magazines or accessories. Our federally mandated lock. A cool, I think waterproof, <laughs> Ziploc bag with all the goodies inside. And then down below is our pistol. We have some adjustable Velcro straps to get things set up and a spare magazine. First though, we'll take a look at what comes with the gun. In our sealed baggie, we've got some decals. This is something that I understand is a Bull Armory signature thing that you get lots of cool swag with your gun. Then we've got a brass and nylon brush as well as an actual cleaning rod. Plate for optics and screw and our manual. And as always, we're gonna take a look at the manual because how well it's written tells us how well the company wants you to understand the gun. This manual's rather thin and simple because, well, this design's been around for 110 or so years. It did have some interesting information in it. For example, a warning or advice to not store or carry the gun at hot half cock. And your basics for field stripping. And here's gonna be the fun part since I always irritate 1911 folks with how I take it, get, take it apart. Here's yet another manufacturer recommending you remove the slide first. I know, heartbreaking, isn't it? I'm sure those folks who like to rant about that have skipped over this section and won't see it. So watch for those comments and we'll have a good laugh about it later. Now, Bull Armory is based out of Israel. I do not know if the gun is plus pre rated or not at this point. In looking at the manufacturer information on the website, what I did see was that it's, um, they recommend avoiding 147 grain or going heavier than 124 grain. I asked Bull Armory about that and I said that it's because some folks who have softer wrists tend to end up having a short stroke slide and then end up with malfunction issues. When we do our range test, you'll of course see um, a wide variety of ammunition, uh, both hot and not, and we'll see how the gun does there. Also has a nice chamber flag in here. And now we'll take a look at the gun after all those folks who want to criticize the way I field strip a 1911 skipped over the manual section. Watch for those guys. Look at this thing. <laughs> it's almost a mullet gun in, in being longer uh, in grip than it is in barrel, but a three and a quarter inch barrel, 16 round nine mil that is rather small and lightweight thanks to this construction design of steel up top and aluminum frame and then polymer down below, a la double stack 1911 style. Of course, first check for clear, as you can see. And when we do that, we also like to look at, do we get magazine ejection or release? A little bit of ejection. Definitely release though. These magazines are not your standard profile of Double Stack 1911. It is a unique profile. However, they do have extra mags available. In fact, we picked some up ourselves since measure 114. Uh, here in Oregon means that we soon won't be able to get them anymore. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at this thing. There went another 1911 officiato. I can I can hear him crying that I dropped the slide. There's a gap right there. Um, folks think that that beats up on the extractor. That might have been the case at one point, but there's a cutout on the barrel for the extractor because it has to fit over the casing. You're not beating the extractor on the barrel when you drop the slide like that. Anyways, <laughs> sorry folks, 1911s are always always fun for me. 
Um, starting up front, you see that interesting star pattern. That's the fluting on this barrel, as if the thing wasn't going to be lightweight enough to begin with. Extra weight has been removed from the barrel, what it doesn't need to be, and yet you still have a thick, strong barrel. That fluting reduces weight, allows some air circulation to keep things cool, um, and it looks good. This kind of interesting beak cut here gives us a little bit of extra rail, and that's why we have three rail space here on the dust cover. The serrations on the slide are nice and deep and very grippy, making it pretty easy to grab. Coming down to the polymer section, we have some texturing on the front strap, uh, the front of the trigger guard for those who like to grab up there. And following down the trigger guard, you see we have a double undercut here. One for the firing hand, one for the support hand. That lets you get the gun lower in your hand and really grab on and hold nicely. Though we have not shot this yet, in my previous experience, that double undercut is a nice advantage to have. It's good and smooth under here, as you'd expect from polymer. And we do have a polymer trigger. Since we're there, let's do the trigger talk. You can see the hammer's already back. It's a bobbed hammer, making it less snag prone and uh, a little more comfortable for concealment. We have our take up to a wall. Crisp break with virtually no over travel. Very short reset that takes us right back to the wall. A fine 1911 style trigger, as one would expect from a gun like this. The rest of the polymer grip is textured all the way around. You can see we've got horizontal lines as it should be to help provide traction as the gun tries to rise and dip. Check uh, diamond pattern on the sides. And you can see we have a little bit of a flaring of a magwell there. Backstrap has the same checkering and we have an enhanced grip safety so that even isosceles shooters shouldn't have an issue depressing that safety while grabbing. Though the beaver tail does not look huge, as you can see everything stays well clear of my double XL hands thanks to the way this is shaped and that hammer being bobbed. Coming up on our sight picture, we have a serrated and blacked out rear and a nice bright green fiber optic front sight. Should make finding that sight very easy. And you can see that this rear sight is strongly protected and is also adjustable. We've got height and left and right on there. The safety is ambidextrous and as far as how the safety feels, sounds and travels, nice positive click up, no over travel, positive click down and no over travel. Very nicely fit safety that functions on both sides. On the rest of the gun, sorry lefties, no controls over here. This is very classic 1911. Interesting to see that undercut there as they removed any unnecessary metal from the thing, which is part of what makes this so light. If you're wondering about specs, etc., check the pinned comment underneath. That'll be our article that has all of that information, or at least the most that we can find on the thing. Next, we'll make some people cranky and field strip the SAS 2. To field strip the SAS 2 ultralight, we're going to check for clear. And then you're going to move the slide back until that cutout there is above your slide lock. I find it easier to grab from the front here and rest with my thumb through the trigger guard. And then we've got to push on the other side of that pin until it comes out far enough to be able to pry. And it is a tight, short, close fit. But there's our slide release. Now we're going to ease the slide forward off of the frame. Taking a look at our frame in here, you can see the aluminum. Is this polymer? That might be polymer. And we have a chassis inside. That would make sense. Smartly done. Very clever ball armory. <laughs> I like it. Now, the instruction manual just talks about uh, pistols with a full length guide rod, more classic 1911 ish, and having to press this forward and then pin it. Get everything out. We don't have to do that on this model. Just bring the spring forward to pull it out. We can see the first spring is not captured, but we do have a dual spring setup. That should make for a smoother shooting gun. Also note the Mickey Mouse face or bear face. That curved part is what sets up against the barrel. We have a bushing here 
same curved part. Now tilt that piece forward and your barrel once unlocked will slide out the front. Taking a look inside our slide, you can see nice shiny stainless where there's any friction or contact points and everything else coated. And this is 70 series gun, meaning it does not have that drop safety plunger in there. Our itty bitty barrel, this thing is a bit dirty. Let me get this cleaned up. It's got some shipping grease, etc. on it. There we are, I hit it real quick with a rim wipe. But look at this brilliant fluting. Not only is it cool styling wise, but they've left this thicker part here to serve as a bushing for this bushingless 1911 design. Pretty neat looking, nicely polished feed ramp. And for those who were crying earlier, there's the cutout there that allows room for the extractor. So you're not banging the extractor against the barrel. Next we'll check for chamber fitment, as always using our nozzle match. Same stuff I've been using for years. I am taking open suggestions though for another current production match production match grade M 9mm because Nozzer's not loading this anymore. As we drop this in, we listen for a plunk. See if it rotates freely, and it does. And then we're taking a look at how much brass is supported. Do have a little bit unsupported there, but that's still a strong part of the brass. It looks pretty good, and the round should drop out as it just did. So looks like a nice uh, chamber fit there. Once again, I'm still not sure. Hopefully by the time we hit the range with this thing, we'll know for sure if we can run plus P ammunition in this. But currently I don't see if we can. And uh, it is important on a short barrel. I say that because although three and a quarter inch isn't that much shorter than four inch, four inches is what most defensive ammunition is calibrated for here in the States. For reassembly, we're gonna get our barrel back in. Make sure that link is up. Insert this guy, remember the uh, curved part goes down towards the barrel. And it should fit in there. Everything is very precisely machined. And then replace our spring with once again, those ears meeting up against the barrel. Bring our link back forward. Go over the slide. And as I finish up the rest of this, which is pretty self-explanatory, I'll tell you how we'll do our shooting impressions video. When we get to the range with this, you will see our cold shots, absolute first shots out of the gun, recorded, so you get our true impressions of how everything goes. We'll do a full magazine plus one, putting 17 rounds into this little guy to see how it runs fully stuffed. Our trademark what's for dinner test, running a variety of 10 different loads through it, including some not recommended by, but physically possible for the gun. So we can see what those results look like and uh, see if it's true or not, or something you need to pay attention to. Then we'll do sights and trigger control on our spinner target, which with this sight picture should be excellent. Then some practical accuracy, five shots from seven yards before you get the concluding thoughts and impressions of both myself and Miss Tia. That wraps up our tabletop review and field strip of the Bull Armory SAS 2 Ultralight, three and a quarter inch, nine mil. Thanks for watching.